Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Marketing Hit. Today we are looking at the content marketing stress test. Now the content marketing stress test is a really simple model that we use at Brafton to help us develop new strategies for our clients to um, find gaps in existing strategies or find ways to uh, revamp uh, strategies that perhaps we've inherited. So whether you work agency side or you work in-house, this is a, a tool that you can use to find new opportunities to use content in more interesting and engaging ways. So this video is only going to be five minutes, so I have to jump straight in to the material. Um, what I've uh, drawn here on the, on the whiteboard is a real simple uh, marketing funnel. So we have awareness, consideration and action. And then on one side, I've drawn my uh, content uh, ideas and on the other side, I've, uh, I've drawn my goals. Now the, I suppose, the objective of this model is to find at each stage of the funnel, so awareness through consideration and action, do we have um, uh, proper goals for each of those funnel stages? And then do we have content that's specifically supporting users in those, in those funnel stages? And quite often, even if you've been running a, a pretty sophisticated digital strategy for some time, this simple exercise will find uh, ways to do things a little differently or find gaps where you maybe missed, uh, missed, missed something in your, you know, your previous work. So let's take a quick look. Uh, so on the content side here in awareness where we're just trying to introduce the business or brand or product to the audience. So maybe they've never heard of us or they don't know that uh, we can provide the solution to their problem. The content tends to be very much focused around those uh, answering questions being helpful, not pushing a sale at all at this stage, just trying to um, be that sort of relevant, useful, authoritative uh, resource, be become part of that early research phase that we know people spend so much time doing these days. So quite often that's, uh, that's through blogs, it also can be through um, you know, simple explainer videos on, 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 on social. Uh, so in terms of the, uh, the, the goal we can expect to achieve from this um, in, the, in this final stage, it's got to be something super low commitment, right? Because these are people that have just been introduced to the brand. Now, it might be that uh, you can go whizzing straight through the funnel in, in one interaction. Now, uh, we, we spend most of our time working in, in B2B, so in our experience, it's a bit of a slower burn. So in the awareness phase, we're looking for to make sure that we have proper measurable goals. And I, I would only define a goal as something that allows you to treat the user differently afterwards. So that could be something like enrolling themselves in a remarketing audience, it could be um, just through liking you on social so that you can segment them out and target them differently uh, with your follow-up content. Or it could be uh, some sort of low commitment uh, in in engagement tactic like a quiz or a survey, which just gets a little bit of, um, you know, sort of not product, but sort of like just information in the, in the, in the space, maybe in exchange for some contact info, which then allows you to send, um, you know, tailored follow-ups. Moving to consideration. Now you're probably thinking, well, we, we understand we need product landing pages, we have those. But the question you should be asking yourself is not, do I have a product landing page for this consideration phase? Is my product landing page the best resource on the internet for that particular product? Just because it's your product doesn't mean to say that you have exclusive uh, um, uh, rights to uh, talk about it. And you'll find that the, the vast majority of the, of the time that your audience spends thinking about making a purchase of your product is not spent on your site. Okay, it's looking elsewhere to see what other people are saying about that product or that service. So what you can do with these landing pages is you take another look at your landing pages now and you go through this exercise and you say, well, how does this compare to all the other resources that are available? Is this really super comprehensive where we've got like a ton of editorial content on this page? Have we made videos? Have we got, um, have we got uh, graphics to help explain how the process works? Have we got testimonials? and and, um, and links to success stories and all of that on these, on these pages. Are they kind of hubs for our product to really kind of try and own this consideration phase? And in terms of the goals, the sort of uh, measurable actions that we might try and drive here on these great new landing pages would be uh, typically downloads, so like an ebook or a white paper, or even better, a webinar, which can be more product focused, more engaging, because the user actually has to sign up, attend, and watch, and maybe they ask questions, and uh, the follow up on webinars, in our experience. Is usually a, a, a lot a lot higher converting than something like an ebook or or a white paper. And then finally, in the action stage, now a lot of people think of content marketing. They think top of funnel. They think about blogging. That's like the main thing that, that comes to mind. But 
there's lots of different content types that can help you in this kind of active phase. If people are going to spend money somewhere, it's either with you or it's with the competition. So this is about just getting them over the line, building that trust, helping them uh, feel confident to, to part with their, their money or commit to, you know, talk to someone in sales or start a demo, a demo or a trial. And so things like testimonials, case studies, but also I think an underused area with a lot of brands is reinforcing and telling their story at the stage. So when you're trying to push the, the demo request and the speak to sales and the buy now, is to have something from the CEO talking about how she started that business and what inspired her, or have some, some, um, uh, some little bios there under the fold of the team that are gonna be working with you if you come on board, okay? So just a, lots of different ways to, uh, to, to tackle that, that funnel, bit of the funnel. Right, my time's up. I hope that was uh, interesting. Try out this um, yourself, whether you're agency or in-house. If you wanna see more uh, amazing content marketing resources, check out our website at Thank you.